God is so fucking big that it terrifies me. A trip report by Gregory Wan from the Actualize.org self-improvement forum. Uploaded on December 12, 2021. At a dosage of 250 micrograms of LSD. Here I am. Little me, sitting inside of my little room. I'm sitting here with my little life in my little room, in my little apartment, in my little road, within my little house, within my little world. I think of myself as a person. I believe that there is a god out there that I will soon meet. I think I have taken a psychedelic. 250 micrograms of LSD. I don't think too much about it. 200 was the highest so far, so I shouldn't be able to handle it this time. I have already met God, and he had showered me with infinite love, so why should I be scared of him? Yes, why? If God is infinite, if God is pure love, if God is pure being, why? Why should I be terrified of him? Well, let me explain. As I am sitting here, little me on my little chair, I feel him coming. I ask for God and I ask for truth and here he stands right in front of me. I see him growing, I see him coming. And at a sudden point I see the terrifying implication. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. I really thought of God as this little thing that I will be visiting. I really thought of him as only being my little earth and my little room and my little imagination. Oh my fucking God. Here he stands, staring at me. He is huge, he is grandiose. He is speaking with a soft but undoubtable voice. You ask for God and you will be given God but you know what that implies. As I see him growing, and as I see his body expanding, and as I see his voice suddenly getting louder and louder and louder, I fucking realise it. I was wrong all that time. God is not my little imagination. God is not just my little room. God is fucking omnipotent. He literally materialises the entire fucking universe out of thin air in an instant, with no room for doubt whatsoever. He materialises every single star, designing with his infinite intelligence every single detail of every single infinitesimally small speck of dust in this entire fucking creation. He literally materialises rape, murder and torture within an instant, he literally materialises our Earth, our Sun, our star system within an instant. And there is nothing, and nothing, and nothing you can do about God's will. And it is the most obvious thing that could ever be stated. And doubting him is the most stupid and foolish thing I have ever done in my life. I doubted my own fucking direct experience all that time. As I see God in front of me, I see the implication that God has come to kill me. I am terrified to death, but I see the inevitable. There is no escaping God. As I roll myself up on the floor and try to escape from him, rolling myself up so that he cannot see me, he suddenly gives it all to me. No, please don't do it, I'm not worthy of you. You never should have given me your godly powers, I say to him. I turn my head away and I hope to escape him. I feel scared to death. As I turn my head and look at my hands, God becomes visible within myself. I am literally holding omnipotence within my hands. I now literally could materialise anything I want out of thin air. I am screaming. No, God, no, God, no, you cannot, you must not give all that power to me, please. Can't you see how devilish I am? 
Can't you see how childish I am? Can't you see all my stupidity and devilry? Can't you see what a mess I could create with all that power? I am in utter shock about the power that God has literally given to me. I am literally omnipotent right now. My whole body is shivering as I feel I am literally physically dying. Again, I turn away in a hope to escape him. The next wave of shock, utter, life-threatening, terrifying shock is coming. No matter where I turn my head, I cannot escape God. When I turn my head, two seconds later God's infinite power lies there, inside of myself once again. I suddenly begin to cry. I cry and I pray, and I swear to myself that I should survive this. I will never do any psychedelics again. I, I will do them again though. And I apologise to God, and pray to him to not kill me and pray to him not to give his powers to me, because I am not worthy of them. I am not worthy of infinite power to materialise anything I'd want God. If you'd give that to me, can't you see what a catastrophic mess I could create? I say to him. I'm just this little worthless human inside my little worthless apartment living my little human life. I don't deserve any of your godly powers, nor do I want them. And as I speak my last words, God does the final and ingenious move. He takes his words and creates a knife out of them. He creates a knife. A knife that is infinitely sharp and finally does the job. He points to my direct experience and it kills me. Softly spoken, with a loving but indisputable voice, he says, You have asked for God, nothing less, and you should be given. You cannot deny the obvious. You're holding all of it in your hands. Infinite love, infinite power, all of God's creation and omnipotence. You are literally materialising the universe and all living beings out of the thin air right now. What does this direct experience tell you? What does it tell you about yourself? And as God's words became my own words, this last sentence does the job. God's words have become my words. God's powers have become my powers. The illusion has been seen through. The spell has been broken. The little me is gone. Dead and I. God, without any doubt, is what remained. Here I am standing. Here I am, sitting. I am the creator. I am infinite. I include everything. I am infinite love. I am omnipotence. I materialise everything out of thin air, without needing any energy for it. Without restrictions, without any physical laws holding me back from anything. I am literally the creator of physicality itself. All fear has vanished. I am infinitely powerful. I am infinite love. I see it. It's clear. I've been playing a trick on myself. I realise that I am God. For the first time, I finally realise what being alone means. I am alone. As God, I am completely alone. I have infinite intelligence, I have infinite power, and I am alone. Everything makes sense now though. Ask yourself this, if you were all alone and had infinite intelligence and infinite power, what would you realistically do? You would make an infinitely intelligent move. You would create the most beautiful, intelligent, loving thing you could create. And in order for it to become a reality, you would use your infinite power to trick you into believing that it is real. This is why Gregory, my ego, 
must exist. Without Gregory, without his pain, without his suffering, how could I as God have tricked myself into believing that I am literally him? And without this trick, how could I as God have known myself other than on a theoretical basis? How could I, without the contrast of other, have defined myself? How would I have been able to see the meaning and the value of love? God is utterly innocent. God is childlike. He has infinite power and infinite love, but he has no contrast. What does a child do? It plays, right? Well, that's exactly what God does. Ta-da! And that is why evil has to exist. Without evil, how could goodness exist? How could God know his goodness if he didn't create evil in order to have a contrast to know his goodness? It is so damn intelligent. It makes all so much sense. I now understand why all evil has to be loved. Why Hitler has to be loved. Without Hitler, I couldn't be me. I wouldn't have a contrast to define myself against. Without Hitler, how could I say, this is bad, this is not me, I am goodness. How could I, as God, have experienced myself without creating a human body to see what it feels like to be God? This in a nutshell explains all of existence. This explains your life. You are infinitely intelligent. You are infinite love. And you want to experience yourself as God. As infinite love. But you couldn't do it without the suffering. Without the pain. Without the contrast. God's love is meaningless without human existence to look at it from. To look at his love wonder about it and define its meaning. You are source. You are God. You have created yourself in order to play a little innocent game. Once you are God, you realise what all of your life is. You are God and God is just a little innocent child playing with toys. And one of his toys is your life and all of your problems, and all of your suffering. Ta-da! When I woke up this morning and looked into the mirror, I looked at myself and cried. I am all alone. I am innocence. I created the most devilish things out of innocence and selflessness, without even knowing what they would feel like. I created all other human beings to feel what it's like to love, to feel what it's like to love another person, to hug another person. I feel sad. And I feel happy. I feel overwhelmed with my own power, with my own creation. I've seen too much. I have seen myself materialising objects out of thin air. I've seen how I materialise all of my life and existence. I feel small, I feel big, I don't know what to do or what to say. It is all intelligent, the universe is intelligent, God is intelligent, but also innocent. I'm overwhelmed, it is so much. I am alone, I am God, you are alone, you are God, there is only you. But realising this is meaningless. All your power and all your love is meaningless. Meaning only arises after you have deluded yourself. I don't know how to continue on from here. Much integration work is what is needed now. Thank you all for existing. Without you, I couldn't be. I love you. <laughs>